Hey y'all, Harold here, and today we are going to get on to part two of our uh, raid fail series, uh, where I learn the valuable, important lesson of backing up my data um, and uh, not having this problem again. Uh, so today, uh, I got the drives in to uh, rebuild the raid array. Uh, well, I should say, I, for rebuilding the array, we only needed one drive. Uh, the array's been up and spinning for about five, six years. Uh, it's time to replace those disks. It's past time to replace those disks. Uh, they're gonna, they're all gonna go. Uh, so uh, there's an entire process in place uh, planned for where we're going to uh, initially rebuild the array, and then we'll purposely degrade the array and rebuild it and degrade it and rebuild it until we got all uh, four new disks in place for the RAID 5. Uh, so yes. Hard drives! Uh, we've got four two terabyte hard drives here to replace the existing four two terabyte hard drives. So it gives us a total capacity of six terabytes in RAID 5 uh, with a formatted capacity of around five and a half terabytes formatted NTFS. Uh, so without further ado, let's get on down to the lab and uh, get to work. So before we get too far ahead of ourselves here, uh, it's very, very important to remember the uh, entire reason why we're doing this and uh, steps you should do before you continue. Uh, that very important step is back up your data. Uh, so I didn't have a single disk large enough and still don't. Uh, the rest of my drives for the backup solution are in order. Um, but I need to get the data off of there. So what I did is I took a single four terabyte drive and two single one terabyte drives and uh, backed up all my data before we began this process because uh, the potential for data loss is very real. Um, anytime you go messing about with this type of stuff. So uh, very key, uh, make sure you do all your backups that you need ahead of time um, if you're going to try something like this. Uh, so. Um, Let's get the disks and let's get going. All right, so we've got drive number one here, and uh, that's where we'll begin. Uh, limited warranty. Get rid of that. Box. Get rid of that. And we've got our drive here. So, uh, we need to do this one drive at a time unfortunately, which is going to take forever, uh, but that's okay. So we just get our drive out here. Hey, nice little, not little, like necessarily little, but uh, two terabyte Barracuda. Uh, it is the ST2000 Delta Michael 006. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and hook this up to the first drive that needs to be swapped, which is the drive that's having all the parity issues. We assume the parity issues are on this last drive right here, just by the sound it's making. Uh, I wasn't able to figure out um, what drive it was for sure, uh, because it's still being registered by the system, it's just not working right. Um, we're gonna start there, see what we get. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead. We're powered off. We're just going to disconnect our data and power. We'll set this drive aside. Take our new drive. Plug her in. Power and data. And for the moment of truth, so we're powering on the box. And let's see how long it takes to boot. Okay, we've made it to our Windows desktop, so let's go ahead and fire up uh, the Microsoft Management Console. So we'll do start run MMC. And we'll go ahead and add a snap in here for disk management. And OK. 
and let's pull this up here. So we've got our disc one needs to be uh, initialized. Convert to dynamic disk, disk one only. All right, so uh, my initial approach didn't work. Uh, <laughs> surprise, surprise. Uh, what I'm gonna do instead is I've got another spot for uh, uh, SATA connection and power. I'm going to take the disk, the new disk, and hook it up there, leave all, current, all four current disks connected and then uh, see if I can play around with the array in Windows to uh, disable one disk and substitute in this disk here. So, so I've got the uh, four disks all hooked up along with our new uh, two terabyte disk as well. And we'll switch over to the other camera so we can see the screen better. And sorry that you're looking at it through a camera. I don't want to install capture software on uh, my server, um, which I think should be self-explanatory. So as we can see here, uh, disk four is in an error state um, and is causing the failed redundancy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and say offline, take the disk offline, and what I'll do up here is I'm going to say right click on the uh, actual um, uh, drive letter, uh, whatever you call this, that. And we'll say uh, repair volume and disk zero. I'll hit cancel back up here. Here's our disk zero, our new disk. Uh, we're going to say repair volume. And I'll say select one of the disks below. It'll be used as a replacement for the broken RAID 5 volume. We want to use disk zero, yes. And we'll say OK. So now it's going to resync uh, the data across uh, the new drive. So this is going to take some time, uh, and I won't bore you by sitting, letting, making you sit here and watch it. Uh, we'll come back after this drive is up and running. So you might be wondering how I'm going to determine which disk is actually. Uh, but the physical disk is actually the one to remove from the system as we continue through this process. Uh, I was a little bit puzzled by that myself, but a little bit of research uh, pointed me in the right direction. Um, so because I don't have uh, any, uh, like a physical RAID card uh, for this array, this is all software RAID through uh, Win Microsoft Windows uh, Server 2016. Uh, and I don't have a chassis with um, drive bays where I can blink individual lights of the drives or anything like that. Uh, i got to get a little more creative to figure out which drive to remove once this sync process is done. Uh, so I'll take you through that real quick and then I'll document it in the description below uh, if you need to use it yourself. Um, so if we look here on the screen, um, we see our disks. We've got our offline disk 4 that was bad. First thing we need to do is get the properties on it. And if we go to details and device instance path, it gives us a big, long, nasty string um, that doesn't mean a whole heck of a lot to us as a human. Uh, and that's okay. Um, what we need to do is run a command, uh, WMIC command. Uh, so we use uh, WMIC disk drive get star, and then we're going to export it, uh, export the uh, output of that to a text file uh, just on the root of C. Um, so what this is doing is going and uh, getting device information about the disk uh, for, directly from the BIOS. What this will tell us is what the device instance path marries up to as far as the serial number of the disk itself. So we'll go ahead and execute that. It's done. We'll uh, go on over to C. There's our text file. We'll edit our text file. And we've got a big, long, nasty table. And you see we've got all these Hitachi drives here. 
and we'll scroll on over until we find our PNP device ID. So here's our list of IDs and if we look at this value here we see the last uh, little bit of this is 0 ampersand 0.0.0, .0, .0 and we have a 0 ampersand 0.0.0, .0 here. So um, to make my life easier I'm going to copy this, spool up a new instance of Notepad and uh, go ahead and put a carriage return in there and grab this header uh, row, uh, row also so we get all of our column names and so when we scroll back through this we find hey there's a serial number of the drive with that serial number we can actually look at the physical drive itself read the serial number off the label and uh, mark it as bad we can take our handy dandy marker here and uh, find our serial number ending in Sierra Alpha uh, Hector Delta. What's H? <laughs> Henry? I don't remember. Uh, so if we find our serial number on here, we said 4 Sierra Alpha Henry Delta. For Sierra Alpha Henry Delta, yep, this is our bad drive. Now we got a little red X on there, and uh, we know that that one's getting pulled and can uh, be destroyed. We continue to wait for the sink. Yay! All right, well, uh, our first sink is done, and it's time to uh, set up our second drive here. Um, if you look at the screen, you'll see uh, this one here uh, decided it has errors now after the sync. So, uh, yeah, this is really good that we're taking care of this now. So, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set disk 1 as being offline. Uh, I went ahead and... Uh, labeled our drives using the method we talked about uh, so I know which disk is disk one <laughs> so I can pull that out I'm gonna go ahead and power down the server swap that out start the sync again and uh, see how it goes and we'll report back after that well we're gonna actually end up taking a different approach here um, we've been syncing the drives overnight uh, a couple of different times trying to get the uh, uh, drive swapped out and it's just not coming together the way it should. Um, so what we're going to end up doing is actually uh, backing up all the data as part of uh, video 3 and we will restore the data onto a completely new array that I built. Uh, with the new disks. Um, so it's being fussy. Uh, not what I had planned, um, but I don't really have the time to fuss with it or the interest. <laughs> It'd be the easier approach uh, since I'll have the disk uh, to do that. Um, so the, the array is stable, um, it's just not, doesn't have all the new disks in it like I'd like. Um, so we'll do the backups in video 3. Uh, build that, build the backup uh, array, and uh, transfer data back and forth, and 